Good morning, North Gay Elementary. Good morning, kindergartners. How are you doing today? Today is uh, Thursday, April 9, 2020, and you are meeting with me for um, our math lesson of the week. Um, so, let's get started. Um, in kindergarten, we have been using one-to-one -one correspondence counting skill to solve problems by matching different sets, um, comparing amounts, and also to help us with recalling and recognition skills. So today, I'm going to show you um, two other ways, uh, maybe three, two other ways that you could continue to practice one-to-one -one correspondence um, throughout the rest of the year, uh, but especially next week during spring break. Um, the first um, thing that I'm going to show you so that you could practice your one-to-one -one correspondence, which is counting to tell the number of objects, I'm going to show you um, an activity called counting jars. And I chose this activity because it is something that you all could do at home. The first thing that you are going to need, um, and you don't really need it, but that's the way I keep it organized, um, is a um, shoebox or a container, something to store it. Right here, I have put this um, uh, little sticker with my picture that says counting jars, my guess, and check to see how many. So here, you could practice various uh, math skills. You could practice your one-to-one -one correspondence, but you could also practice estimating, which is guessing, and then counting using your one-to-one -one correspondence to double check that amount and make sure you get the right amount. So inside my box, what I have are different jars, and this is kind of like um, a version of a counting collection in jars. So um, I'm going to tilt this so you could see inside my box. So in here, I have different jars, and inside these jars, I have different amount of objects. Like here in this jar right here, for example, I have, and to open it, I have um, glue sticks caps, okay? So the idea um, of this is that you still practice counting. So this is the way I would do it with the students, okay? Pick a jar, the student will pick a jar, and then they will say, how many do you think are there in this jar? How many objects? Yeah. And the student might say 20. Um, and then we said, okay, it's time to count and check the right amount. So we'll open our jar and then you just go and you count. I'm doing it here in the air sort of that you could see it. And then you will count using one-to-one -one correspondence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did I guess the right amount? No. My guess was too high. I had in my, um, in my jar, I have ten less than what I estimated. So that's one way that you could practice. And you could use any kind of jar. These are plastic jars. Um, just because working with the kids, um, I kind of like to make sure that everyone's safe. Um, something that you could use if you don't have plastic jars are um, the uh, medicine bottles. You remove and peel all the stickers and then you use those for your collection. And you could use things like glue stick caps um, and this, um, what is the other one? Um, here I have like different pieces of straws, just getting the straw, cutting them into small pieces. Um, in this one, I have a whole bunch of uh, pinto beans. 
um, and every jar has a different amount. In that way, you have it set up and the students could practice using one-to-one -one correspondence and counting from their county, um, counting jar collection all the time. The other um, way that we could practice one-to-one -one correspondence is actually using a counting collection. And that is more the way we use it in classroom. So um, for that, we use sort of like um, a format, sort of like this. And um, the students get to write their name and the date when they work on the collection. Then they look at the collection bag and they um, label their collection. So for example, let's see if this sticks right here. Okay. So for example, um, I brought this um, collection from school and this collection happens to be, let's see how I label my collection. This collection, I call it Dino World. It's just a whole bunch of dinosaurs, plastic toys. Again, it could be just like my hair clips from the other day or buttons, um, zippers, um, anything that you could find around the house and your student could help um, make the collection. So kindergartners, you could help, ask your family for help and come up with a collection. So um, today we're going to use Dino World Collection and I'm going to go ahead and fill my chart and you could write this on a piece of paper on a whiteboard if you have it um or you could just say it verbally and share with the family but if you do have a piece of paper after you practice your collection you could then snap a photo and send it to miss ruth or to me and then we will be able to see and keep track of the work you're doing so my collection name in this case is dino world Dino, and this also helps the student practice some writing. Dino World. Dino World. Okay, and then just like with the counting jars, the student needs to uh, need to um, estimate. They need to take a guess. How many do you think are there in this bag? Take a look at it, okay? Use clues like size. How many? Uh, how about we say, did I hear you say 25? Okay, I'm gonna go with that number. My estimation, my guess, 25. Okay. Oh, some of other students are thinking differently. Some others have a bigger number and some others have a smaller number. But again, we are estimating, we're making our best guess. Now we need to count for real to find the total amount. And you're gonna count in your counting collection using that one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, we count different ways. Some people put it on a surface, some people organize it. Today, I'm just going to organize it. I have these bowls, just kind of like what I showed you the other day. And these are just plastic bowls that I have. And I'm gonna put them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten i have ten of this look a lot and for me it's really easy practice counting by tens so i'm going to make sure i'm going to put ten on each and then i'm gonna count by tens that's the easiest way so here we go and you could count with me and help me at home ready go one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten the other one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have one more ball left and let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that one didn't really make it all the way to ten. Okay. So now I'm gonna count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And in the other one, I have seven. 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 97 dinosaurs. So I go back to my recording sheet and I write my number 97. 90 is nine tens. Seven ones. 97. Now my recording sheet says, show me your work. In this case, I use balls, so I'm not going to draw it exactly, but if I put these circles like this, they represent um, the container I use to store my collection. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then in each container, I was trying to put ten dinosaurs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you keep going like that. Ten. Ten. And again, because I'm putting those dinosaurs inside each container. 10, 10, and again, 10, and I remember in the last one I only had 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, 97, now here it says show me another way. So you could either come up with a way of showing your work or you could count it a different way and, and make different groups. And this could be a way that those of you superstars or super achievers, you could take your learning to the next level. For example, if you make groups of 20, can you get there? I'll show you with a different color. Maybe we could put them together and make groups of 20. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to combine these two circles. And this is a group of 20. 10 plus 10. Then I'm going to combine these other two. And again, this is 20. Okay. 
and I'm going to do this as a guide so I don't make any mistakes. Two more groups of 10, make 20. Two more groups, make 20. And then I have here one group of 10 and one group of seven. So I'm going to show this one in a smaller circle, 10 and seven, okay? So here, then you could just go ahead and either just say um, 20 and 20 more is 40 and 20 more is 60, 20 more is 80, 10, 90, 97. Or you could actually then cross it out as you count and write 20. It's like counting by twos. Two, four two, four. So I'm going to cross this out. Now I have 40 and 20 more. Now I have 60, two, four, six, and then eight, 80. Now I have 80 and now 80 and 10 more. Now we have 90 and 90 and seven more is 97. That is one way. This is only if you really, really want to challenge yourself in a different way. You could also then do tally marks or if you have at home either abacus or homemade reckon uh, recs, sorry, which we learn how to make them with a pipe cleaner and um, beads on them. You could do that or you could always use your fingers and count or use your dinosaur in your collection and just group them a different way so that you could count. That is a way of using your counting collection, practicing, um, estimating, and representing or showing your work with a picture. All right, so with that, then what's left I said at the beginning I had two activities but since I know that we're not gonna see each other for a week then I'm going to give you one more I know that I show you using um, um, a piece of paper drawing a color and using classification skills just to do the counting um, and practice that one-to-one -one correspondence well you could do the same by drawing any picture and I'll show you today what I have are bears okay and in these bears um, these are plastic uh, they have some laminating film on top so that you could write uh, the number and change it but you could just simply um, find uh, pictures or draw your own and then again you tell the student what number is this and then the student might say it or not oh sorry you cannot see that uh, right here okay um, what number is this and then the student might say 15 then you say can you show me that amount using your counters. It's important, my friends, that we remember that the number we say is what it is and we show that amount. So again, let's show this amount using our counters. And now, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, just like that, okay? So, just to summarize, kindergartners, remember, today and every day, whenever you're practicing your counting skills, always, always make sure that you double check your answer to make sure that the number you're saying matches the quantity that you actually have. And remember to explain how 
you know your answer using some mathematical explanation. Okay, I'll uh, wish you, I wish you a happy spring break and I'll see you in a week from now. Stay safe, be well. Bye-bye.